Hi, I'm Kat and I'm here to do the December wrap up. December was really a month to finish things. So in 2020, me and my best friend started watching Gossip Girl and she is way faster than me at watching series and TV shows. I don't know how she does it, but she eats them up. That's, there's no other word for it. And I am a bit slower like snail pace type of slow <laughs> and we both wanted to finish this series together this month this year so i kind of marathoned most of it this month i watched season three season four season five and season six of gossip girl so bravo all around because that is an accomplishment for someone like me who is super super slow at finishing series at watching tv shows in general bravo i have to say about this show that overall my favorite season was season two but the show itself is exactly what i wanted it's shallow it's dramatic over the top but at the same time, it has that little something that's so entertaining to watch. Overall, I just really, really enjoyed it. I love Blair. She is insane, over the top, absurd. <laughs> Her relationship with Chuck is, once again, not from this earth. It's no way, like, it doesn't exist in real life. But it's super entertaining to watch so i loved it and the last tv show that i managed to finish i think on the last day of the year or the day before that was glee season four i just wanted something else to watch so i kind of focused on glee and i managed to finish another season this one was a bit more dramatic than what we have seen up until this point we talked about more serious issues i enjoy it and it's it's my time to sing along <laughs> so as you can see i was very much focused on finishing things gossip girl and another season of glee and that was it and now let's get to the other part of my month that took a lot of my attention which is books starting with something that i had read before but i knew i loved and i just i wanted to revisit the story and that is the kiss quotient by helen huang and it's just i read this book last year 2019 last year and it just made this huge impression on me because up until this point the first time i read this book romance books I've always enjoyed them, but they've never felt real, especially in the way that they depict a relationship. And here, even though the premise itself is very over the top, unrealistic, the way that the characters came together and developed, the way their relationship grew little by little, I don't know, it, it, something felt different. And it was so special the first time I read it that I, I wanted to read it again to kind of finish the year off in a positive note and obviously on a high from that mindset of romance I decided very ridiculously to reread Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert which is a book that I read in July 2020 so not even six months apart and I don't think I've ever done that rereading a book so close together but yeah i was just i was in the mood to read more romance there was nothing new that i was in the mood to try and this was just something that i loved once again the first time and i wanted that comfort feeling of going into a book knowing that i would love it knowing what i was getting myself into and just basking in all its glory and that's what i did i am terrible at describing what books are about but we know right very quickly this book is about stella who is kind of a workaholic she has a hard time um interacting with people 
socially and in order to maybe get a relationship she thinks the best way to go about it is to hire a professional so she hires a male escort to kind of teach her how she can be more sociable and find a partner here we have Chloe Brown who is our main character and she goes through some things in her life that make her reevaluate where she is and she decides to make a list to kind of turn her life around and change certain things that she's not happy with. I was in the mood for romance and I, I, I got my romance. Then I got to the Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab, one of my most anticipated books of 2020 and one of those that I just had a feeling that I was going to love and I am so glad that I didn't let this gather dust on my bookshelf. I loved every single page of this book. You can tell that this is the masterpiece of V. Schwab's writing career up until this point, obviously. You can tell how much work she put into it, how much dedication this story took to tell and to tell right and it's, it's just the most stunning story of strength of life <sighs> this is one of those that it's the book of a lifetime and i can see myself rereading it over and over and over again so to explain a little bit <laughs> what it is about this book tells the story of Addie larue a french girl who is born or kind of lives around 1714. Living at the time that she does, she feels trapped. So she kind of makes a deal with a god in order to live longer and to live more. Obviously that has consequences and this is her story. All her struggles, all her adventures, what she gets up to, the consequences of her deal. And it is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I know there's a lot of hype surrounding this at the same time i know some people didn't vibe with this they felt that it was a bit slow a bit boring and i mean go into it not expecting too much because if you go into it with super high expectations you're always bound to be a bit disappointed but even with my high expectations i loved it so much the characters jump off the page not only addy but all the other supporting characters. I was so engrossed in the story. I wanted to understand everything that happened. I cannot recommend this book enough. And if ever you are in need of recommendations for a gift for someone, think about this book because it is a stunning, stunning present for anyone. After finishing That Beauty, I decided to finally finish Ghosts of the Shadow Market by Cassandra Clare, Sarah Reese Brennan, Morgan Johnson, Kelly Link, and Robin Wasserman. So this is a collection of short stories and I read most of them I think in April. So if you're not familiar with Cassandra Clare's short story collections, she usually writes them um, between her other books like the main books of a series and so you're meant to read most of the short stories in this collection after Lord of Shadows and before Queen of Air and Darkness and that's exactly what I did. Overall this book focuses on Jem. We see him throughout the years. There's some things in common with the short stories. We see how little elements of this come into play in Queen of Air and Darkness, how some of them will come into play later when we see the Wicked Powers, which I'm so excited about. And I, I love, 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 love these collections. I'm so happy that Cassandra Clare and all her <laughs> writer friends write these stories because in a way they complement her world, the Shadowhunter world, so beautifully, which I love. The last two short stories take place after the events of Queen of Air and Darkness and reading them has me really excited, really hyped for The Wicked Powers. If you can tell, I loved it. 
loved it if you are one of those people that doesn't really understand or doesn't really value her short story collections please give it a try if obviously you enjoy her shadow hunter chronicles because it's amazing so worth the read and i mean this is another book like this is not extra content or anything this this is important important information after those books i finally got to red at the bone by jacqueline woodson another book that i got some months ago and i absolutely needed to read before the end of the year because i was just super curious about it all i have ever heard about this book are rave reviews i had never read any jacqueline woodson book before but once again she is very well acclaimed as an author so overall i was super excited to get to this book and it did not disappoint at all this is the first book of hers that i've ever read it'll certainly not be the last this is a little difficult to explain because you are just thrown into this world this is contemporary normal literary fiction and you see into this family's life and into this family's story it really makes you see and think how each one of us are the main character in our story but to everybody else we are just secondary characters and this book puts that so brilliantly on the page i really enjoy the writing style and like i said before i will definitely be checking out more of this author's books because i really enjoyed it now we're down to the last two books one of them being a christmas gift and that is reindeer boy by cassandra jean this is a graphic novel and it is the cutest cutest thing it was the book that i decided to read on christmas day and it is so adorable my brain associates cassandra jean's illustration style with the shadow hunter chronicles it's inevitable this felt a little bit like the dynamic of the shadow hunter characters but low stakes super cute and stress-free <laughs> so if you're looking for a christmas vibes story with those elements in it please pick this up and finally we get to the last book of 2020 and that is dark dawn by jay kristoff and i'm so happy that i managed to read the whole series this year because it was an amazing adventure obviously i won't spoil the books especially because dark dawn is a fairly new release i love this trilogy absolutely love it and i really enjoyed dark dawn without giving anything away i have to say that out of the three this was my least favorite i felt like the first half of it was a bit aimless and slow paced which i don't know i i, I can't understand where we were coming from i can understand why certain things needed to happen this slowly but at the same time i i feel like things could have been different and i would enjoy them more if they were different then i have to say that we went way way high stakes for this book and i've said this before you already know i prefer low stakes even though this was a very like big mission that mia was on and even though this was a revenge story so nothing low stakes about that but in a way it was and i would have preferred if we just focused on that but we take a turn to kind of save the world that i could do without <laughs> just personally i am so glad that i discovered jay kristoff this year because I will definitely be continuing to read his other books. I love the way he writes. I love his humor, his sarcasm. Even though I would have preferred another kind of ending, I can really appreciate this one. And that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And please let me know in the comments what were your favorites of December. I'm always curious. Love to know and talk to you in the comments. And that's it. I'll see you next time. Bye.